Hello and welcome to episode 262 and as you've probably guessed from the title of this video we are on the new tar farm complex here at Linear Fisheries. I'm here with my good mate Wayne. Morning. I haven't fished with Wayne since last year at Islands. It was the Islands wasn't it? Yeah, yeah that was yeah. a good session was, yeah. so hopefully we have another good session That's now. It, yeah. So yeah, we're on the new Tar Farm uh, complex here at Linear Fisheries. Only just opened this week, um, Monday. Today is Sunday, so it's literally only it's been open six days. What you can see behind us is Lake Seven, and Wayne is this is Wayne's peg, which is also peg seven. Um, to the left, in peg six. Hot spot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we were told there was a hot spot in peg six. So uh, yeah, Wayne booked up first. He booked this peg and then give me the old WhatsApp. I've booked onto Tar Farm. Fancy joining me? Yes, I do. So I booked up in the next peg. So we're quite close. It's only what 30, 40 yards apart. That, yeah. 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 So we can be nice and sociable. Like I say, we're on Lake Seven. Um, I've not really looked a bit online, but I think there's a kind of a nice stamp of fish, good looking fish. I think if we catch anything, we're probably going to be looking at the kind of mid to upper double range at the moment with it all being new fish here. If we catch. If the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's certainly, um, I mean, obviously the, you can see that the, it's all very mature. The lakes have been dug quite a few years and linear have kind of like waited until the right time to the place properly matured and kind of opened it up to the fishing i think what is it there's i know we're on lake seven but there isn't actually seven lakes is there there's i think there's five, five lakes or something five, i think it's five. yeah I, I don't know how they've numbered it but i think i think there's five lakes yeah and we're on lake seven and lake eight is behind us so i don't know how they've numbered it but but anyway right I'm going to crack on. First thing I need to do is go and dip me nets. There's a dip tank just around the corner from my swim, so I need to go and do that. I'm still mid set up, so it's probably going to be a while before I actually get the rods in the water. So, yeah, that's enough waffle for this intro. So, let's do it. Let's go fishing. Let's go fishing. Have a third in the intro, guys. First job: dip the nets, slings, and hook your mat. So with it all being new, everything's all nice and new. The uh, treatment is all still nice and pink in there at the moment. always dip your nets and slings and if you have got any nasties on your kit from a previous session obviously it protects the fishery that you're about to to fish all right time to go and get some rig sorted Hi guys, so first thing I need to do is try and find some spots to fish. Obviously with these lakes being new and the knowledge being zero on them, I need to get the old marker rod out and find some spots. Now in this swim, swim six, it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's a corner, but it's kind of an end swim. So I've got a nice left hand margin. I was speaking to one of the bailiffs like when I was setting up and he was saying there used to be a feeding post down that left hand margin where they were feeding the fish from before they opened. So he said, go tight to the reeds and you'll be all right there. I can't fish tight to the reeds because uh, I've already been doing a bit of markering at work and uh, it is weedy as you like every time I get close to the reeds even a couple of rod lengths out obviously where it's shallower it's um 
quite weedy. I was just bringing in big clumps of Canadian palm weed. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, not really fishable to be fair to go close in. But anyway, but I think I have found a spot. So so only for the left hand rod. So in the distance, I've got a sort of a nice pointy tree and hopefully if I get the cast right, if I just aim to the left hand side of said pointy tree I think I've found a nice little hard spot with a bit of gravel as well so that kind of landed to the right of the tree but we are in the vicinity. Yes, and that's that's clear and a bit a bit gravelly. So I'd say it's probably about maybe a rod length and a half, maybe two rod lengths out from the actual margins. But yeah, and I can see from like, the inside margin sort of down here it's you know right on the inside I can see it's weedy so yeah probably a rod length out until it starts deepening off so yeah so unfortunately tight tight to the reeds isn't really a isn't an option but Yes, but that spot is definitely my first option. Right, open water from looking at the lake map looks a little bit deeper, so I should imagine finding some spots sort of for me middle and right hand rods. Should be a bit easier. See, I've still bought in a bit of Canadian there, but uh, I'll do one more cast to make sure I am happy with where I'm aiming for. Well, going to be aiming for my left hand rod. deep it is there. So I mean, with me marker float and me stem I've got on there, they're already about a foot and a half long so we pull off six inches just to say that's two foot and then we'll go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, but about ten foot deep there. Right. And when I pull it back, it does pull into a bit more weed, but I'm happy with that spot. So, so what I'll do now, guys, is Get this marker round the wrap sticks, see how far that is. Yeah, so, so. Right, let's get it round the wrap sticks, see how far that spot is. Right, guys, so it's taking a bit of time finding that spot for the left hand rod. But, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave the marker in the clip at the same range, 15 and a half wraps. And just wang it, just dead out in straight. Dead out in straight, dead out straight. 
and just see, hopefully, if I can find a nice clear spot out there at kind of the same range, just for the sake of, well, I'll spod later on, just for the sake of keeping things at the same range, range for spotting purposes, so it's probably not the best way to fish, but if it makes it easier for me, I don't care. We'll do a t couple more chucks just in that general vicinity because obviously not all casts land on exactly the same spot, especially not with me anyway. fishing and spodding easy and I had a look around the side towards where I was casting the, the left hand marker earlier and I'd say kind of 15 and a half wraps is probably I'd probably say a sort of a few wraps short of halfway because I've got peg five dead opposite me there's no one in there at the moment, but obviously if anyone does rock up there at any point, obviously you don't want to be overcasting and interfering with another angler swim. But again, the bailiff did say there's hardly anyone booked on this complex. It is a Sunday night. Most people have got work tomorrow. Kids go back to school tomorrow after the bank holiday weekend. I think he said there's only about 10 anglers at the moment booked on the whole of the Tar Farm Lake, so... But yeah, obviously we'll keep the rig in my side of the lake, just in case anyone rocks up in that swim opposite. Right. Now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Go with the same range with a right hand rod. But just to my right here, there's an inflow from Lake 8 behind us. And I'm wondering whether to just do my right hand rod just off of this inflow. I don't know if you can hear the water in the background. But we'll just have a little marquee up in all the rod length and half, two rod length just in front of this inflow in front of me well, that's coming back nice and smooth anyway so but obviously where there's any introduction in water into the lake there's going to be a little bit more oxygenation in the water from the flowing water See if I can get a bit, a little bit tighter before, see how far I can go before I hit weed. Oh, that's perfect. Right. That's a nice little gravel spot just there, so I think I might. See how much tighter I can go to that inflow. All nice and clear. So I think my right hand rod is just going to go down my inside margin. I'm fishing in front of this inflow. Oh, I'll just 
put the anti-reverse on. Yeah, it's even nice and gravelly down there, so let's just wind this clutch off and see how deep it is there. So again, because me marker boom and float is about a foot and a half long, six inches, so effectively that's two foot, three, four. It's only four foot deep there. Let's go out a little bit further. So we're probably about two rod lengths off of the inflow now. And it's still nice and gravelly down there. That, that inflow of water must be keeping it nice and clear down there. So two foot, three, four, five, six, six. I think I have found my right hand spot. Obviously, it slopes off. I don't know why I'm doing that. And the reverse would go out a little bit further, say three rod lengths, to see how much it. Probably more like four rod lengths, but that is clear and gravelly. Three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Yeah, so it's clearly on a sloping bank to my right hand side here. One more a bit further out. Oh. Yep, still nice and clear. So it's two foot, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, oh, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> right. So, dilemma do I fish halfway up that slope? to be nearer that inflow of oxygenated water or do I go a bit further out to the bottom of the drop off carries on sloping off so right anyway so without making this little bit of marker footage too long I'll uh, I'll do a bit more marker work find where this drop off ends how far out it is and then uh, make up my mind where I'm gonna fish this right hand rod after that Right, after a bit of faffing around guys, I'm finally ready to do my first cast into these uh, new lakes at the Linear Complex. So I'm starting off, and if you watched my last video, you'll see, know this rig, the old fluorocarbon D rig, the simple lead clip system. 
but it worked well in my last video. So I assume we're still at linear. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work again. So, here we go then guys. Hopefully I can get this cast spot on because as we've seen during the marker up work it's a clear spot amongst some weed. Do that again when a bit when a bit right there is a left to right wind blowing i can't tell you the actual wind direction at the moment because i don't know the geography of the layout of the lake but this is the one rod i'm i need to get spot on because of the weed that's present in my swim. So let's try that again. like it. Right, let's get a back lead to go on there and then we're finally fishing. There we go then guys, cast number two, middle rod. Now as I've already said, I've just clipped the uh, range up all the same, so this is 15 and a half wraps. So ideally I need to pick a tree or a hole in a tree on the bank so I can cast to the same spot each time which I've just done then so oh. uh, to be fair until I put some bait out I don't think where it lands is too important because out where this middle and right hand rods are going to be fishing it's clear anyway when I was bringing the marker rod back it was just clear all the way uh, I forgot to mention while I was marking up I felt I said I had 10 foot on the left hand rod. Pretty much where the middle and right hand rods are going to be fishing, it's 12 foot deep, so not a huge topography difference between over there and dead out in front of me. So. be putting some bait out as well when the rods are, are all finely sorted. I'm not sure if the picture's being obscured with any raindrops guys. We do have some very, it's raining but it's that fine, really fine rain. Right, here we go guys, third and final rod, ready to go out, and a fish, what's that? To begin with, we'll fish all three rods at the same range, oh, oh nearly a schoolboy error then. Cast properly sometimes. 
Right then guys, so shortly I'm going to be starting up my baiting strategy. So, so what I'm going to do is try to sort of approach it. Well, I say to it, it's not really different to approaches, but um, for those of you uh, who watched my last video on Oxfleas, where I've done quite well, towards the end of the session, I had to knock up some more bait, which was basically what I've got here. So it's the four, six and eight mil uh, pellets and then boily crumb, all the seafood. So yeah, if you saw my last video, you saw me knock that up towards the end of the session. So, but then what I've also bought, yeah, I bought bait, <laughs> is um, some of Linear Fisheries own bait. Now, because these lakes have only just opened up, what they did before they uh, opened up the lakes was um, bait up with, you know, feed the fish with their own bait. So I've bought, they've got two different flavours at the moment. Uh, Wayne's got one of them, which I think is like a toffee one. And this one's the Redfish Crunch. So... I don't know about fishy, but they stink of garlic. So anyway, so I thought, well, seeing the fish have been used to basically eating this as their natural food source before the fishery opened, I thought, you know, it's probably going to be, well, probably, hopefully, an advantage to use some of their bait. So I've got two empty buckets, right? And then as per last time, the kind of the base of both both kind of bait mixes is gonna be the old sweet corn. So I'm just gonna kind of put half in one, half in the other. So that's gonna be the common theme of both sets of bait. So and then we'll just So that's that. So that's going to be my spod mix for one rod. And then what I'll do, because these are 18 mils, I'm not going to put them in whole. I've got the old Ridge Monkey chopper, so I'm going to chop them all into halves and, you know make them sort of go a bit further. Now, the problem is this is probably going to take me a bit of time because I've got the smaller Ridge Monkey Chopper that only goes up to 16 mil baits and these are 18 mil boilies. But they just about <laughs> fit with a bit of a... so they don't go down but if I poke them down they go. So I think I'm going to be sat here for a while poking boilies down the tubes. Just so I can chop them in half. Looks that well. Looks that, and that will make the bait just go a bit for how many is that old? Five in each tube once so so we can do 30 baits at a pot. in there so yeah so I'm gonna crack on and do that with that whole kilo obviously I'm not gonna film that bit because I'm probably gonna be here for a while doing that so that's gonna be my st baiting strategy guys obviously the hook baits I'm fishing with is the seafood but it, it just seems silly not to feed at least one rod with the bait that the fish have been used to being eating for however long it was when they stocked these fish in here, so... Right, anyway, I'm going to crack on and then uh, get this done. Alright guys, so now I have chopped up that kilo of Linear's bait and got it in the bucket, so I'm going to get some of it out. So I'm probably going to put 
five spods per rod. I think what I'm going to do, the linear bait with a corn I'm going to put over the left rod, the uh, seafood with the corn I'm going to put over the middle rod, and then I'm going to try the right hand rod, just bait free, so leave it fishing as a single, just to... No particular reason why, I'm just going to see how it fishes sort of one area as a single, so, you know, so if putting a bit of bait in does kill it, at least I've not killed sort of one rod. And before anyone says, oh, you haven't got the float on your spawn, as per linear rules, this is one of the new ones with the, the float built in, so... So I think I'm going to start off with five spawns per rod. That's actually my second spawn because I, I did one off camera just before I started filming just to uh, get my eye in. on that spot. Right, I'm going to do a couple more and then I'll get the middle rod baited. would have been if it had it open. Good old bombs. Even when men knew they don't always open. <laughs> So that was spawn number three guys, I'm going to put a couple more in and then like I said I'll leave one rod fishing just as a single for now just to, you know, just to see if that might be the tactic to go with. So, so I'm going to put two more on on this rod and then that's it, once that's done at least I can relax for the evening now get the barbecue on and think about this. Right, evening guys. Yep, it is evening. Just gone seven o'clock, but uh, I'm gonna put the camera away in a minute because although you can't see it, it is raining. It's that, you know, that really, really fine rain that you can 
you know, you can barely feel, but then he kind of touches it. Oh, fucking, I'm soaking. So, um, yeah, I've had the kind of the camera pointing at me swim all day long. You know, hoping to, you know, film a run and a bite. But it's all been quite so far. I had a little bit of a double bleep on my right hand rod, but 10, 15 minutes ago. But yeah, all quiet so far. But yeah, like I said, I'm going to put the camera away now because obviously I don't want it to get soaking wet. So, but yeah, it's all quiet wise. There was a couple of people kind of opposite Wayne earlier on they've gone. So yeah, there's only me and Wayne left on this lake now. But, but yeah, anyway, so hopefully guys, I'll uh, get to see you in the evening or the night at some point. But yeah, for now I'm going to put the camera away because, you know, obviously I don't want it ruined. Right, hopefully see you in the night guys. people and uh, what a night of weather that was obviously nothing happened fishing wise but boy didn't it half ever rain last night I was up most of the night with just the sound of the rain you know crashing against my bivvy uh, yeah wasn't a very good night's sleep last night because I was up after the night li listening to the sound of the rain. But, yeah, God, almost glad nothing happened away on the fishing side because I'd, I'd have got absolutely drenched if it did. I've got no idea what time the rain stopped, but eventually it, it did. And it's, uh, it's just gone nine o'clock and I've only just kind of just woke up. <laughs> but anyway, so back to the fishing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wind the rods in in a moment. And then I think, because nothing's happened so far on yellow hook baits, I'm going to have a rechuck and I'm going to try a different colour hook bait today. Probably just white. Still stick with the seafood wafters, but just change for a white from a yellow. And for the daytime part of today, I'll I'll probably try chucking a bit longer and come off my baited areas. Just see if fishing with singles and see what happens. Obviously, nothing's happened on the spots that I've baited up, so. Um, I'll try white hook baits because again when I was in the linear shop yesterday buying that kilo of linear own bait I noticed that their pots of hook baits were either match to hatch or like a very pale sort of pastel pink so you know more like a sort of an off white kind of colour so again if that's what people have been using maybe on these new lakes for test fishing before it got open to us general public yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try some kind of a bit whiter, paler. So, so that's my thinking. Right, I'm going to get these rods wound in, crack on with the bait change. And then as you can see, I'm shriveling up, so then it'll be breakfast time. Right guys, okay, so I have just made such change. This is the first rod, so... Nothing's changed rig-wise, you know, it's still lead clip system, rigmarole, free fall, tubing type leader. Uh, not leader, it is tubing. But, um, yeah. You know, fluorocarbon D-rig, but now a white hook bait. And as I said, this is just going to be chucked. Got it. Somewhere randomly just gonna chuck it long just so it's 
off the off the baited patch I put in yesterday. And sometime this afternoon, this evening, whatever, we'll uh I'll go back onto the baited patch, maybe put a bit more bait in. Uh, I'm sure some of you might say, oh why are you putting more bait in if you haven't caught anything? Perhaps the reason is I haven't put enough bait in. Who knows? It's a new fishery, new fish. You don't know how these fish are reacting, so... Right, anyway. Right, let's chuck this long or long-ish. Definitely into uh, other side pegs territory if uh, <laughs> with that cast. So, if anyone turns up on the other side later on, they'll definitely have to come back in. <laughs> We'll try it just for today, like I said, no, nothing gained, nothing ventured and all that malarkey. Like I say, again with it being new lakes, new fish, you, probably, you just have to keep experimenting until you find out what works. Again. Just going to chuck it long towards the other side, long, longish. left hand rod where I was aiming for that clear spot I found yesterday at least I know it hit me mark because I've just brought in a clean rig right guys so you might be able to notice that I've just kind of uh, my rods are in a different spot I've just leapfrogged my uh, rods over to now the left and middle alarms from the middle and right alarms because just as I was rebaiting this rod I just noticed about four rod lengths out from this water inlet that I showed you yesterday. I've just seen some signs of bubbling, so possibly feeding fish. So this rod, instead of going long, is now just going to go on that spot. I say about it's literally about four rod lengths out from this outflow just here, so. Oh, and there's a bit of bobbling now, just to give me a little marker. Ah, oh, yes. And that is right on the money. So, yeah. So, I would definitely say that was signs of... Um, feeding fish so it would be silly not to put a rod on it right that's it guys all three rods now repositioned for today's fishing like I say I will go back onto the baited spots this evening, this afternoon. Uh, breakfast time now. And there, just broke the depths with a suggestible one over the period of the morning. Let's see if we can get it out without a tangle.
down forever, that does not it? <laughs> Bit of a tactic change, mate. Yeah, I've got to try the adjustable zig in them. In that, um, there's an area in between the two deep holes. It sort of ranges from, I don't know, probably sort of 16 to 24 foot on the, looking on the map. Yeah. So I'll pop a picture of the map up now, guys, if you yeah. just to show you what Wayne's on about. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna like three. So that's three foot now on the bottom. I want to give that half an hour and come up another three foot every sort of half hour or so. Keep the fingers and legs and toes and everything else crossed. <laughs> we can only try. We might help to put the bobbin on the alarm, won't we? That might help. Ah, I thought I'd just get the camera out, guys, and uh, see me and Wayne haven't had anything yet. So I'll just zoom in onto these guys on the opposite side of the lake. I think that's where the fish must be because these guys have only been here about an hour <laughs> and they're into a fish already. Must be giving him a bit of a fight because that's peg uh, five foot three. He's actually fishing from peg two. He's had to kind of put his rod over the trees to kind of follow the fish round. But yeah, these guys have only been here about an hour, guys, and into a fish already, so uh, yeah, perhaps that's where the fish are, over that side of the lake. Let's just say, if this would be the downside to the booking system, once you've uh, booked your swim, that's where you are for your duration of your session. If the fish are over there, tough luck because you, you can't move <laughs> right. but hey oh nice for them still rubbish for us <laughs> hi right, guys so still nothing has happened on the fishing side for me or Wayne so uh, I'm gonna start getting ready for sort of redoing the rods later on onto the uh back onto the baited spot so obviously we saw the mix i done yesterday the seafood pellets and corn and the, the fishery boily with corn uh, i've got another bag of corn with me out in my cool box i'm just gonna refresh each bucket with just a another kind of half a bag of corn so, so I think what goes out now is going to be kind of mostly corn in fact that one I'd say looks still kind of 50 50 really with a pellet and corn and don't forget we're fishing in 10 to 12 foot of water where I'm fishing so I'm sure even on a sunny day it is still quite dark down in them depths so with the extra corn going in I think it should add a bit more visual element for the fish down at them depths so Obviously, at the moment, we've seen that I've baited up two spots and left one spot bait free. Nothing's happened on either spot at the moment, so I'll stick with um, putting that bait on the left hand rod, that bait on the middle rod, and then I'll put some bait out on the right hand rod as well now, which I'll probably just do once I've baited the left rod and the right rod. I'll probably just do a combo of the baits for the right am rod. But uh, yeah, right. Let's get it out in the lake. Alright guys, so just like yesterday, I'm gonna put five spods on each rod. 
fill us enough, you know, for bait going in yesterday. It's, it's enough just to top up the spot. So. Like I say, I know no fish have been caught, but you know, you never know if some of it has been eaten, none of it's been eaten when, you know, just because you ain't caught, it, it doesn't mean to say fish haven't been on your spot and eaten it. It's, that could have been the case and they just, you haven't just, be, just haven't been lucky enough for them to pick up your, your rig, so. really do like the smell of that fishery bait. You can really smell the garlic coming off of it. <laughs> oh, good old spoms, never opened. Right, I'm going to put a couple more in on this spot and then we'll move round to the uh, middle rod. Swapped over buckets now. So that's three so far, like I said, I'm going to do another two off camera and then we'll move round to the right hand spot. Right, right hand rod now guys. And that, yeah, as we're already aware, no bait went out, went out onto this spot yesterday. So I'll put an extra one on this one, six spawns I'll do on this one, like I say I'll do three of the pellet and corn mix and three of the uh, boily and corn mix. You can definitely tell where that one landed with the old uh, flat spot created by the, uh, by the pellets. Love bombs when they don't open.
Grill Burgers. Lovely jubbly. Beautiful. Wayne. Hello. Have you got a cob on? I have got a cob on, yeah. <laughs> Catching no fish, I've got a cob on. <laughs> right guys, it's uh, seven o'clock in the evening now. I've just lit me barbecue ready to have me uh, dinner this evening. So while the barbecue is uh, doing its thing, I'm going to get the rods wound in, get them rebaited and then we'll get them onto their uh, onto their baited spots. But also the uh, in the last hour or so the wind has done a bit of a change of direction. It's now blowing towards this little bay that I'm fishing in. So uh yeah, I mean, I haven't had the fish on me at all or anything at the moment. So I'm hoping now that the wind has done a change of direction and it's blowing down towards my corner now. I mean, it's not a strong wind. You could probably tell behind me the lake still looks quite flat, but what is blowing is blowing in my direction now. So hopefully if the fish follow the wind, that will... um bring them down to my corner now but yeah uh, I don't think the fish have just been in front of me up up to this point so right anyway let's get some yellow hook baits on get them on them uh, baited spots and uh, fingers crossed that this changing direction brings a bit more fortune my way Here's that rod I've just wrapped up, so back onto the baited spots. This is the uh, the margin rod on that clear spot in the weed. So this is the important one that I need to get right. Yep, donk. Uh, Lovely, lovely. That's on the spot. Felt it going down nice with a nice bump. Middle rod, num rod number two. The rod I'm aiming for just left of peg five opposite me. And uh, just a few moments ago, there was a bit of a bit of a flat spot that come up on that spot as well so I think I might have fish moving in and munching on the bait that I've put out hopefully Right, here we go then guys, third and final recast of the evening. This rod I'm aiming pretty much halfway between pegs four and five. Uh. Oh. 
Oh, that sounded like a bird's nest went out. I think we're going to have to redo that again, because that sounded like... Oh yeah, I can see it now. Great big lovely bird's nest. Oh boy, not what I want to be. <laughs> Messing around with... Great. Don't want to be flapping around with palaver like this when the barbecue's on the go. Good morning everybody. And yeah, another quiet night. Uh, well, yeah. No runs, no bites, no nothing. But the left hand rod did have a bit of activity last night. The fish that I'm kind of the, the fish the the rod that I'm fishing as near as I can to the margin on that clear spot I found a couple of times in the night that that alarm kind of went doo -doo -doo. the all you know kind of made me kind of sit up put my shoes on thinking it was going to go so twice it did that last night so um, but yeah nothing come of it but. I'm pretty sure that must have been signs of a uh, of fish feeding in my area and sort of knocking the line at some point. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure of that. But yeah, so that's uh, almost 48 hours. It's just gone 8 o'clock at the moment. Wayne is currently just starting his pack down because on the time slots on this lake you start your session at 11 o'clock and then uh, however many days you do on your pack up day you have to pack up at 10 o'clock so you, you do lose one hour out of your session but that's to allow you know for the the next angler who possibly could be coming into your swim at 11 o'clock so uh, yeah so Wayne's just starting his pack down now as the same as I'll have to do tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, so that's kind of, you know, almost 48 hours of nothing happening on on the IQD rig. So I might change rigs when I do a recast. I'm going to have some breakfast first. And then, uh, you know, I always consider kind of mornings up until at least late morning still kind of bite time so i never touch me rods sort of first thing in the morning but yeah i think when i do change them i think i'm gonna whip out the old ronnie rigs because uh yeah I, I don't know me even though you know when i was markering up the middle and right hand rods i didn't bring any weed back out there there just might be some low lime weed or some soft silt out there or some uh, and I know there's weed on that left hand ro side rod kind of in that area so perhaps the baits just need to be set up a little bit more just to make them a bit more visual to the fish I don't know I'm trying to second guess myself so uh, so yeah so I think yeah when I redo the rods you yeah. know couple of hours I'll uh, switch to the old Ronnie's and see how that goes right guys I've just had a, probably a liner but my alarm just kind of screamed into life but all it's done is the bobbins come up tight nothing else has happened or happening so I'm sure it's just a liner But for, up until this point, we haven't really seen any signs of fish, me or Wayne, on this side of the, this, this end of the lake. About five minutes ago, I was in Wayne's swim, and he had a fish bosh out in front of him. And I just, before I had the liner, I had a fish bosh out in front of me. So it's good signs, guys. <laughs> Finally seeing signs of fish at this end of the lake. 
but yeah, nothing's happening with this now, so I'm, I'm sure that's just a liner. But that's a good sign, guys, because it means somewhere between me and my rig, there's fish. Right then, Wayne has come to the end of his 48-hour uh, session, guy. Oh, well, it's 47-hour session, 47, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you always lose an hour. But, uh, yeah, so it's been nice meeting up with you and again, mate. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, Unfortunately, mate. the session hasn't been more productive. We were thinking new lakes, new, new fish, hungry fish. We were thinking it was going to be a bit more productive than it was, weren't we? But, yeah. um, but yeah, that's just the way it is, guys. So, uh, anyway, right. Yeah, best look on your next 20, 24 hours. Hopefully. 24 hours, yeah. yeah. So... Don't forget guys, if you aren't already subscribed to Wayne, Wayne's Fishing Adventures, click the link above Wayne's head now. Oh. <laughs> so uh, yeah, right, I'll catch you later. Yeah, cheers Chris. I got it. See you later. Bye. Bye. Right guys, so first uh, change of tactic, ready to go. As I said, I was gonna go with a Ronnie Riggs, which is exactly what I've done, so. There you go. I mean, we've all seen Ronnie Riggs before. Sticking with the yellow themed hook baits, be you know, just because they're quite high vis with the depth of water that we've got. So, uh, no need for any extra weight or putty on the bottom of the hook or the rig. But when I uh, set them all up, I tested them in, in the margins and they are. Uh, they balance perfectly. It's a size four curve shank hook, so the weight and the hook and swivel perfectly sinks that 12 mil pop up without any extra weight need being added. So, right, this rod, my right hand rod, is going to go down. Well, I say my margin. It's not going to be the margin. It's going to be in front of this outlet again because. Uh, once again, first thing this morning, I saw a bit of bobbling, kind of four to five wraps out in front of this inlet here. So, as like yesterday, I'm just going to do an underarm swing. And once again, that's roughly where I saw the bobbling. Right, middle rod. The uh, hook baits I've put on these um, on these Ronnies is the old beaten Anna. I wanted to stick with yellow hook baits, and the first one I pulled out of my bag happened to be the beaten Anna. So no other reason for the beaten Anna than that. Uh, I think I'm going to chuck towards kind of open water. But as I said, I'm only going to do about 10 wraps. So. Like I said, chuck into open water, obviously, because if the main bulk of the fish have been at the other end of the lake towards the open water with where I'd, where you would think you would pick them up from first probably, maybe <laughs> maybe not alright, third and final rod guys okay, and again this one Actually, I'm seeing a patch of bubbling just slightly to my left at about a sort of a, an 11 o'clock angle, probably just five wraps out. So now I've just seen that, this rod can go there.
Right guys, so just a quick little update. So uh, just now I've just repositioned all three rods. They, you saw the right arm rod and the left arm rod only go out with kind of underarm flicks. And the, but even both of them two were still getting liners. So I've just done all three rods and they're in even closer now. So they're all about just four wraps out now. Again, just underarm plops, but, uh, but yeah, kind of in the last hour or so, kind of all three rods have been doing, doing liners. So, uh, so yeah, so we're fishing quite close in now. And I don't know if you can tell on the water now, but we've got all the, uh, the wind has definitely been pushing down this way because we've got all the, all the pond scum and kind of, you know, the jets and the flotsam now kind of down in my corner. So the wind definitely has been pushing down this way. So, uh, yeah, so if, if the fish are following all them little bits and pieces, that would, uh, you know, confirm why I'm getting why I'm getting some liners now. So hopefully now I've positioned the rods in a bit closer. It won't be long before I get a fish. I've certainly waited long enough this session. <laughs> Alright guys, another quick update and the rods have been repositioned again. So um Mr. Roper, the head bailiff, has just been round doing his kind of rounds and checks. Asked me if I'd had anything. Said, unfortunately, not at the moment. And he said, stick one in front of this outlet, like right in front of me. And I said, yep, I've already been doing that. Said I've been about four or five rod lengths out, out from it. And he went, no, go about one rod length, two rod lengths off of it. <laughs> so uh, that's what I've just done. And equally, middle and left hand rods have just literally gone out two rod lengths as well. Literally a rod length off of the rod tips that they've just gone out. So apparently that's the shelf before the drop off apparently. So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> can only uh, try what the head bailiff suggests. Okay, so this is the uh, inlet from the cake just to my right hand side. And you might notice the water's done a funny shade of pink. Well, that is my doing <laughs> and again this was down to uh, Mr. Roper's advice he said you know get some liquid pop down to uh, or pop across to the other side pour it down the tube and uh, yeah this is the result <laughs> some pink water and he said hopefully that should get the fish feeding you know, into this spot just on the ledge, just here. So, uh, yeah, so it's starting to run a bit clear now. So, the liquid I put in is all pretty much come free, but yeah, and I don't know how well it's actually coming out on camera, guys. I can't really tell on my small screen, but yeah, so we do have a nice little cloud of pink water in front of this inlet now and my rig is pretty much there right in the middle of it all right good evening ladies and gentlemen so i'm just redoing the rods now for my final evening I'm going to stick with the Ronnie rigs. I'm going to stick with fishing close in based on the uh, 
bailiff's advice when he come round earlier on. Close in, as in. Like literally two, three rod lengths out from from uh, from the bank. I'm just gonna uh, do something slightly different in the fact that I'm gonna put one and a half baits on the hair for the night. Uh, the thing is, I got where I've cut the baits in half. It's uh, just might ex you know where it exposes the inner of the bait. It just might give off a bit more attraction. So that's my thinking. Whether it will actually uh, work or not, I do not know, but. So, there we go, a bait and a half on a Ronnie. Alright and guys, right hand rod ready to go. Because it is a bait and a half, I've just had to stick a little bit of putty to counterbalance that uh, extra half of bait. Literally, how far the bailiff said to fish out. And guys, so that middle rod, I'd say, and it's literally going to go an underarm plop. I go slightly to the right, just so that when I do the left hand rod, I can do the left hand rod dead out in, dead out in front. While we had the nice weather this afternoon, I've been watching a ghosty cruise up and down the margins, literally six foot off of my rod tips. So that would be nice if I could um, get that on the bank. I must have seen it about four or five times go up and down in front of my rod tips. Right, here we go then guys. Third and final rod for the final night. Or in other words, last chance saloon. Right, now the rods are done, I can chill for the evening. Praying that something will happen on the final night. I was really confident on the way into this session, thinking new lakes, new fish. You know, they're, gonna, they're not going to be rig shy because they haven't seen virtually no fishing. Oh, yeah, it just goes to show all uh, best laid plans and all that. But, yeah, as you can see behind me, I've just lit my barbecue, guys, so it's going to be my tea time when that's ready to start cooking on. But one thing I have kind of learnt about this place is that the fish do move on the wind a lot. And it's only been today where the fit, where the wind has uh, has been in my favour, and I've started actually seeing fish, kind of down this end and this corner of the lake, and up until kind of 
the wind switch round. Hadn't seen anything down in this end, kind of my corner. But I've been seeing fish today. Uh, and while it was really sunny, there was fish on the surface. And I even got the floater rod out of the van and had to go on the old floater rod for an hour or so. But obviously with no success. Uh, right. Chill for the next half an hour now while these flames burn themselves out and oh, hopefully these fish are going to stay down in this corner and pick up one of these Ronnie rigs tonight. Hey guys, so time to put the camera away now for the night. It's uh, quarter to ten now, so and there are a there's a few light spots of rain in the air, so I'm going to get the camera away in the bivvy now. And then we're due some really heavy rain in the night. From about midnight to about 3 o'clock in the morning, so... So, Sod's Law says, if I am going to get a fish, that's when I'm going to catch it. <laughs> but, right, anyway guys, fingers crossed, rain or not, hopefully I get to see you in the night. Oh, good morning people, and after another very wet night weather-wise, yeah, unfortunately, nothing has happened. So it's just gone six o'clock, uh, I have to be off at 10 o'clock because that's the time slot for this lake so obviously that gives me sort of about four hours of fishing left so there is still time yet hi right, guys i'm practically at the end of my session now i've only got like an hour and a half of my session left but as you can tell from me swim, everything's packed down and away now. I've only got the rods left to put away. So yeah, I'm going to call it a day to this video. Unfortunately, it's been a blank. It would have been nice to, uh, you know, rock up here for the first time and have a few fish. And, uh, you know, I've seen a load of pictures of the fish online that got stocked into these lakes and they are absolutely stunning fish so it would have been nice to have a couple of them in me uh in me kind of diary but oh well it, it wasn't to be so you know we did try different areas different rigs took the bailiff's advice unfortunately still nothing happened but yeah i gotta admit it's an absolutely beautiful complex i mean these lakes you'd never think they were part of the, the linear complex they're completely different in looks style you know the booking system it's uh you know i think you know like this lake is like nine acres and it's only got 12 swims if that was linear it'd probably have only 29 swims but but anyway so i will be back i'm most definitely 100 percent sure about that so it is a little bit pricey, £39 for 24 hours if you fish for, with three rods. But I, I, I think for what you're getting in front of you and the kind of the extra water you get, and I, I, I think it's worth it to be fair, guys. But uh, anyway, right, I'm gonna carry on my pack down. Not sure where or when I'll be fishing next, maybe back to Aspen. Seeing I've not been on there for uh, probably getting on for three months now. So, till next time, guys, tie lines. <laughs>